Hello, and welcome back to another stupendous, I hope, Sunday Night News and Nonsense Report. Sinner! Sinner, of course, and yes, you can guess who the victim is and who's the sinner. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking all tech news. I think all tech, unless Spatry wants to talk about coffee and stuff like that. But anyway, geez, geez, coughing on the, coughing on the coffee already. Coffee and cigarettes, they go hand in hand. Uh, usually, Spatry, you finish the coffee, then douse the cigarette in the empty cup. N- not before. I just want to know that's how that works. But anyway, we are back, of course, with Spatry's Cup of Linux, some cool tech news. And I would like to get started, Spatry, with Google Drive, which went online last week. Now, the first time I, I saw this, I'm like, wow, there's a Google car for sale. But a lot. Have you seen the Google car? No. No, what is Yeah, that's a, yeah. yeah, it's a funny little red car that has this dome on top and it has these uh, 360 degree cameras taking pictures and that's how you get those um, street views when you're looking at the maps. Uh-huh. And it's, it's going around to all the towns and everything. Yeah, this is interesting. I've actually got that article opened up and they're asking if this is going to be the end of Ubuntu 1 because it's giving more drive space. Um, I, I thought, because I signed up, by the way, I, I did, I did test this last, I think it was on a Friday, it wasn't ready yet for me, but I got the email on the Monday, I was able to log in from Ubuntu Linux, no problem, but I thought Google Drive and, and Ubuntu One are each giving five gigabytes free, yes? Um, hmm. I think I, they I, are, I, now, now the cost to upgrade may be... Uh, more competitive to go with Google, Google because I believe they start at two dollars and ninety-five cents. But mm-hmm. I think they each give five gigs for free. Uh, I I have actually tested Ubuntu One. I will have a review a review of that in the future. Both seem easy to use. I didn't have any problems using either. Uh, the Google interface maybe looks a little bit cleaner, maybe not much. But yeah, kudos to Google for creating something that I believe at least for us Windows dual booters, to be dummies proof. Yeah, this this is really good for a lot of people, and especially if you uh, have a number of different devices. You have your you have your home computer, you have your tablet, and then you have your cell phone, and you want to be able to sync files between them. This is a this is a great deal, and five gigs should be more than enough space for most people. Yeah. Especially especially if you just want to if you just want to take your work home and that sort of thing, you can upload it to your cloud and then retrieve it from your home system. I think it's a really good idea. Yes. Would I use it? No, not really. I don't like the idea of having uh, my data synced over the network, and you know that does raise a you know yes. raise a question: How secure is this, and how yes. secure is my data? You know, and um, but then again, of course, you can encrypt your data as yes. well, and that sort of thing. But you know, um, I'm not that much of a guru when it comes to data encryption and. All that yeah. other stuff, well, you know? cloud storage seems to be the new coolest thing to do, but you know what? I'm trying it, and uh, so far I kind of like it, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, very good, very good. Spatry, what do you have for the next news item? Oh, well, I saw this interesting news tidbit, and uh, of course everybody knows Microsoft is a real tyrant when it comes to these bogus patents, and Microsoft... And Barnes and Noble settle a patent dispute. Let me go ahead and read some of this. Okay. In, okay. In its signature style, Microsoft has settled the patent dispute with Barnes and Noble. The company was losing the legal fight against Barnes and Noble, in and a court decision certainly was going to trash Microsoft's strategy of ripping Android players over bogus patents. Now Microsoft is paying. Three hundred million dollars in damages. Whoa! As a payment to Barnes and Noble for settling the bogus patent dispute, Microsoft is creating a subsidiary for Barnes and Nobles with a whopping three hundred million investment for a seventeen point six percent stake, whereas Barnes and Noble holds eighty two point four percent stake in the new company. Now uh, the article is a little lengthy here, but Basically, it went on to say it raised a question as to whether the Nook device will be running Windows 8, um, oh, that sort of thing. I yeah, so interesting. Yeah, yeah. So this is something that maybe Microsoft is trying to do to yeah. you know 
you know, get uh... their in. You know, because let's face it, in terms of the mobile markets, Microsoft hasn't even entered anything into it. Not other yet. Than, nope. Other than their uh, mobile phones. And really, I had a look at the mobile phone and yeah. when comparing side by side between um, the Windows the Windows Mobile and the Android. I'm sorry. I still think the Android is a lot nicer. Yes, Windows 7 mobile phones you know, uh, are fast, they are snappy and yes. responsive. But yes. let me tell you, when I, when I, you know, I, I, I still have a Windows uh, mobile phone uh, that, um, interestingly enough, I was able to get DOS and a few other things running on it as well. Cool. Uh, that phone would crash three or four times a day. And you know what? My Android device is still running. I never shut it down. I may, be, I may reboot my phone once a month if that, I mean, well, it's stable. It doesn't crash or anything. And whereas the Windows mobile devices, I had, I'd have to pull the back off, pull out the battery, put it back in, <laughs> wash, rinse, and repeat. Horse stable, you know? yeah, right. Yeah, stable or horse stable. Well, aside. I, I, I tell you what. In the interest of fairness, I remember, I remember playing Quiet. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, I remember. In the of fairness. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, folks, it started already. No, but I remember playing with the very first Windows 7 type mobile phone, playing with it. I didn't buy it. But I thought at the time, you know what, this really isn't bad. And I thought it was snappy, at least in the time that I play with it, a few minutes. It didn't, it didn't crash on me. And I thought it was easy to use. But, yes, I think Microsoft is coming a little bit late to the game when it comes to mobility. As far as the other new stuff you mentioned, I didn't see that. All I can say is my advice to corporations, play nice. You know, like we're all friends and humans. I think we are. Play nice, okay? You know where I get my news, and uh, this is a pro tip for all you, uh, all you guys out there that are looking for uh, the Linux and free software magazine. This uh, site is called MookTware.com, M-U-K-T-W-A-R-E, MookTware.com. Dot com. And actually, uh, PinGuy himself, uh, Anthony Norman, the creator of PinGuy OS, recommended this site to me. And I've been checking this site every day. Awesome news stories cool. and everything on here. Mook, Mook. Is that like a character on Star Wars, like the cousin of a Wookiee? Like, kind of like a Mookie? <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars, Star Trek, something out that. But yeah, the thing yeah. is, it, yeah. You know, anything anything technology or Linux related is on here. Lots of really good stories, so you don't want to miss that website out. Good tip. Okay, let's go to the next one. Uh, speaking of mo mobility, the KDE Spark uh, tablet. Uh, actually, it was called that, which I thought was a cool name, but then they changed it to the Vivaldi. And I'm like, Vivaldi, I feel like like if I buy this, I should get a rebate for like a free month of meatballs or something, you know, because it's Italian. It's based off the Italian composer, Vivaldi. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure why they went from the Spark, which I guess even that sounds like a card. The new KDE Spark, a, a single cylinder engine that gets 94,000 miles to a gallon or something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, it is called the Vivaldi. And I did catch a bit of tidbit news that they're now going from the standard 512, 512 megabytes of RAM to a whopping, that's what the article said, to mm -hmm. a whopping 1 gig. Now, look, it's nice to say 1 gig, but I wouldn't exactly call it whopping, right? Well, what they're saying about the Vivaldi is the upgrade will make a significant performance boost, especially when running multiple applications. Vivaldi puts a complete computer in your palm, as you will be able to use any Linux application, including including the uh, LibreOffice and the GIMP. You got it. So imagine having the GIMP in the palm of your hand. You can do your uh, image editing and that sort of thing. And Lord knows what else you'll be able to do with this. So with a gigabyte of RAM, you know, uh, you know, pretty much uh, that's where it's at. You know, and uh, so that's definitely welcome to see a device that's offering this. Well, I wish KDE and the developers whopping success. Let's see. Do you have something else or do I for the final one? Uh, you. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I saved the best for last. Now, this is oh. it, it is technology, but this was an article last 
week, I think off the BBC. I just caught it random, uh, Spatry. But apparently a company not in the U.S., uh, I'm not sure where, but they are working on a reusable spacecraft where sometime in the future <laughs> you will be able this is this is what i read it's reusable it sounds like a baggies or something but no you will be able to book a trip to mars and back for only five hundred thousand dollars now when you consider what's involved that doesn't sound right but here's my question to you spatry and to the folks out there let's say let's speculate okay let's say between shut up let's say between <laughs> Let's say between here and Mars, your spaceship gets a flat tire or something like that. <laughs> Does the AAA have a limit of like 60,000 miles to and from or something like that? And interestingly enough, the restrooms on this ship will have reusable toilet paper. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> Uh, I suppose with technology, anything's possible, but just, oh my goodness gracious. It's stable or horse stable. Yeah, really. But, I mean, like, it isn't like if you break down, you can go to the nearest motel in space or the, or, or the gas station or like Starbase, whatever you want to call it. But it's like, I mean, will you be able to call, like, if your spaceship broke, breaks down, can you call like a space taxi? I mean, how does that work? <laughs> I don't know. But the thing is, you know, uh, I saw one of these shows on uh, Discovery or History or one of these channels where um, a majority of the missions to Mars have actually failed. Uh, a, or a good – maybe not a majority, but a good chunk of them have failed. I think it's like half and half at best, yes. Exactly, exactly. So we've got all this money they're wasting um, sending all these probes and everything. We've got the Hubble Space Telescope now. You know, and obviously, you know, we can we can zoom out and zoom into all these universes and look at all these other things. You know, why do we really have to send all these probes over to Mars? Come well, on, it's a dead planetary body. Nothing lives on that planet. Well, look, now, um, um, again, in the interest of fairness, again, I, I think they're going there to see what's on the surface of Mars. Well, I think I can tell them what's on the surface of Mars. You want to know what's on the surface of Mars? Old broken Church. down, old broken down spaceships. That's what's on the surface of Mars. But, <laughs> but uh, and dirt, yes. But no, um, personally, and on a rocks. and it rocks, yes. On on a personal note, I am I was well I was until he passed away. Rest his soul. A big fan of Carl Sagan, who was able to bring space news, all the complexity stuff down to Earth. Great person, never had a chance to meet him, read some of his books, of course. The fantastic movie Contact was based off his novel. Awesome um, movie. Awesome movie. Yes, yes. Definitely check it out if you haven't seen it. But on a personal note, I think it would be cool if we can safely, relatively speaking, safely put humans or send humans to Mars and land in the on, a, on another planet Mars the first time in human history. I think it would be a fantastic uh, thing, uh, cultural and human achievement. Um, you know, you should be doing this in your Arnold Schwarzenegger voice about the <laughs> Mars thing. We must travel to Mars. And it doesn't <laughs> matter how many spaceships are broken, because here on Earth, I must escape the Terminator. She will get me. Uh, but no, I think it's fine to travel to Mars if it can be efficient and safe. Personally, I think it would be cool, and I'll just leave it at that. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, if you have 500000 in the bank, uh, definitely um, uh, send the money to either myself or Total OS today, and we'll get you. Yes, there. I'll make sure. And well, in fact, if you send a million, I'll make sure that I'll send a taxi right behind you just in case something happens, you know. Uh, you'll have to sign a waiver. No, no refunds. All sales final. <laughs> there you go. Well, folks, on that note, Spatry, do you have anything else? Uh, no, I don't. Um, okay. I think no, that's it. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. Um, okay. Why yeah, don't you much. take us out then? End the show. Uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> so exciting. He wants to get back to his Starbucks coffee. He's such a snob. <laughs> such a snob. Anyway, hey. folks, thank you for listening. On yes, behalf of we, my yes, 
we we really enjoy doing these shows and that sort of thing folks thank you for listening to these podcasts and that sort of thing you know they're they're fun exciting and i look forward to doing these every week surprisingly i was actually able to keep it clean this week can you imagine that yes uh, he did a very good job and uh (laughs) thank you spatry i'll i'll put a little star on top of your paper tomorrow a little a little cookie you know like you did so good but uh Thanks for listening, (laughs) folks, and as always, we will catch you sometime in the future. All right, get off of my Skype total OS today. Goodbye, and I'm done. I quit. Goodbye. (laughs) All right, that's it.